All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin and we've got our sensor here and the temperatures were a max of 82.9 and a min of 53.4 Fahrenheit, which is 28.3 and 11.9 Celsius. And I just put that in here because this is an outdoor bin and we are in February, so it's our coldest month. Look right away, we've got some red wigglers right here and you'll notice that the bedding and stuff looks a little bit darker. That's because we did not harvest, so I didn't put all the big stuff back on. And I want to get right in here because what we put in here last kind of looked like a space alien. It was the flower stalk of our bananas that kind of died in the freeze that we had over Christmas. So let's go ahead and dig under and see how they did because it was really dry. And I actually added water a couple times to try and rehydrate them. But let's see how it looks. And I'll just turn it over real quick. And, oh, we've got some worms crawling all in and out, but as expected, they didn't kind of totally obliterate it or anything. It looks like it's still trying to rehydrate. This is kind of an individual banana right here, and I'll pull it apart, and you can see inside is just a little bit of flesh. They didn't have time to get all the sugars in the bananas and to fatten up because it wasn't right by the time we had that freeze. But the worms are certainly tracking inside of it, and getting all over it. So what I'm gonna do is I will probably set it to the side. Oh, and right here, this looks like a sweet potato that's just kind of mushed into there. And a little baby worm. This is a good example of a little baby red wiggler right here. So very pink, but at the very end, you see just a little bit of an orange tip. And that's kind of your indicator that it's a red wiggler. So I'm gonna push this to the side and then we'll keep digging in to see what else from our feeding is left in here. We put in some sweet potatoes, like you see right here, and these are slow foods. They take a little bit longer, so it's slower for the worms to digest them. That's why we call them slow foods. And then we put in some banana peels, we put in some pumpkin, a lettuce stalk, some beans, some strawberry tops, and what we're seeing right here is all kinds of mush and a bit of a worm, I don't know if you call it a worm ball or just a worm scrum or something, but they are all inside and out of this. And I'm not even sure what this is. It almost looks like it's the flower part of that banana and lots of congregation of worms there. So that is fantastic. They're definitely going in and eating the food. And I can feel it really moist down here where the food was. And I think we're gonna find some more right here, kind of where this banana, nope, this is again, this is the flower stalk. So they're really enjoying that flower. And you know what, it feels a little bit more hydrated than these bananas over here. And look, we've got a little bit of a spider and that might've been a stowaway from when we put this on here. So let's keep digging in and see if we find any of our food. Cause right now, what I feel like we have in here is mostly, the flower end of that banana stalk. So what I'm gonna keep doing is I'm gonna keep hydrating this. I'm gonna keep adding water so that this gets a lot more moist and kind of pliable. Right now it's doing a lot better than when we first put it in here. I demonstrated in the last video that it was super crunchy. So we're very far away from that stage, but I'm gonna go ahead and dig around here real quick. And if I find anything interesting, I'll go ahead and stop the fast forward here. And of course, right away I find the pumpkin stem Again, let me see if it's mushy. A little bit mushy, I think, but mostly I think the castings are kind of getting embedded in these furrows right here from the pumpkin stem, and that's why you see them all over it. I'm not really sure that they're eating it too much. Look at all these worms. Look at these fat, chunky worms. Oh, you know what we found right here? This is a mating pair. So right here is the end of one worm. And right over here is the end of another worm. And right there, you can see the clitellum of one worm there, the clitellum of the other worm right there, and they're kind of connected. And what's gonna happen is one worm is gonna produce a cocoon over here, and one will produce one over there. And then they kind of wiggle out of the cocoon. The cocoon kind of forms on the end of them. So we're gonna go ahead and let them be, let them do their thing and help us produce more worms. Oh, hey, sorry, I keep I tr keep trying to get to the point where I fast forward this and I can't because there are so many beautiful worms in here. I think we have somewhere around 4,000 to 5,000 in here. 
So as I'm doing this, all I'm trying to do is make sure there aren't any pockets of fermentation or areas where oxygen is not getting. So this isn't necessarily a required, but in a big bin like this, that's not quite like a huge CFT or an urban worm bag, but something I can manage. I like to get in here and just make sure there's no nitrogen smelling things or fermentation going on. So right here is, I think this is a banana. I don't know, but... I just had to stop because so many worms. And if you look right here, look right next to my thumb. That right there is a little cocoon. Worm cocoon right there. Amazing. Just amazing. Right here is the pit of just a huge avocado. Got a lot of worms around it and a little bit of the avocado flesh right here, I think. And worms kind of eating it. But certainly, I would not think that the avocado pit is ready to be burst or anything. I think this is going to take a couple more days or, or weeks. But then this guy right here has me wondering. Because, uh, you know what, maybe he's just at the flesh part. Yep, right there. He's kind of under the skin of this avocado pit. I thought maybe he was all the way down. But look at that. We've got small worms. We've got mature worms. For some reason, they just love avocado in my bins. So this is a very productive bin. This is <laughs> really amazing to me. So I put a big trough here, and what I'm going to do is put down a lot of bedding. We didn't harvest, so I'm seeing a lot of castings here, but I want to get this volume up real high. So here we go in with a bunch of shredded cardboard and shredded newspaper. And every time you feed, it's good to put in additional bedding because they eat the bedding and the food. Now you've probably seen me talk about this before, but the shreds that my shredder produce are just absolutely amazing and they're super tiny and they really help the worms to break it down. So here's what we had in mind for the feeding. I've got some pumpkin and then I've got some watermelon and some of our food scraps in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it straight down. This watermelon is going to be great for them to add moisture to the bedding that I have here. And we'll just kind of dump this right in and then add some of the stuff. Now I freeze it all and then I let it thaw out a little bit. So we've got a a whole ripe banana right here and then we've got some banana peels and just some I don't know pineapple slices and strawberry tops that kind of thing and here I've got some pumpkin and we'll just go ahead and add that straight in there now one of the things you probably see is I have almost an endless supply of pumpkin and that is because during Halloween I collected a bunch of people's jack-o-lanterns and then I sliced them up and froze them and also this watermelon I've got a neighbor that really likes watermelon and she gives me her rinds so I've got a good collection of that, and I just throw it in my freezer. So if you're looking for extra food scraps, if your population is growing, then go ahead and ask your neighbors or even your family. My mom likes to give me food scraps too. And you will be surprised how many people are just intrigued at the worm farming hobby, and they will be glad to give you some of their extra food scraps. So, and of course, this is really dark, and it blended in well with the bin. So I'm going to try and add this down here and put our pits down in there too. I don't think the worms will mind that it's all mixed up with the food, but I am going to add some more bedding on top and then try and add some of this extra castings and stuff on top of that. So one of the things you may notice as I'm doing my videos is I'm in and out of the bag a lot. And every time I come in and out of the bag, I like to take all the little tiny worms off my gloves. So you don't see that because I edited it out, but I do get those little tiny worms that are on there. So we've got our food. We've got our banana, crazy, mystery, alien, octopus looking thing. And I forgot to put the amendments, but let me go ahead and add those now. So first thing we'll add in is some worm chow, and this is just expired grains. In fact, I just made some new stuff, and it's oats, coconut sugar, we've got some graham crackers in here, and panko breadcrumbs. Next, we'll add in some used coffee grounds and tea grounds, and again, just another food source for them. And then finally for grit, I like to use pulverized eggshells, and on my last video, I showed you how I do that. One important thing to note is you want to keep your face away from this because you don't want to breathe in the dust. So the worms will use that grit to help digest their food and break it down. And right now we're just going to kind of bury this up with all this extra castings and previously old bedding. And we're also going to put our sensor on top. But another thing I'm going to do because there's just so much in here right now and I'm loving this volume is we are going to add even more bedding on top. And what I'll probably do is tomorrow morning come in here and add some water right on top of it. And it's very easy to do in a bin like this because it is a fabric pot and any excess water just drains right from it right onto the ground. 
And this bin sits right on the ground in my backyard. So in goes more bedding, especially around the edges. And again, we'll add water because this is extremely dry bedding right now. And a little bit more and even more right there. And then right on top is gonna go our sensor for our thermometer. Now you see kind of a low temperature with this and that's because we put in some cold food. So when we check it next time, I bet you're gonna see again in maybe even the 40s or the 50s for min temperature Fahrenheit. And then as a max, unless this thing gets heated up, we'll probably be in the 70s Fahrenheit, which is somewhere in the 21-ish kind of temperature. So that will do it. I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.